Hey guys, Richard Holden here and welcome to the channel. If you're looking to make more power, should you do an all motor build, you know, heads, cam, and intake, or should you just add a turbo? Which one's more expensive? Which one makes more power? In this video, we're going to take a look at a comparison I did on a 4.6 liter two valve four, but it really applies to a lot of different motors. We're going to take a look at what I did on a naturally aspirated combination by upgrading the cylinder head camshafts and intake manifold on a non-PI motor and upgrading it to ported PI status. And then we're going to compare that to adding a simple inexpensive, in this case, a 76 millimeter turbo from CX Racing and an air to water intercore. So is it less expensive to do the all motor route? or is it less expensive to do the turbo route and which one makes more power let's find out to start our comparison of the na upgrades versus simply adding boost to a stock motor we obviously need to take a look at our na combination and there was, there's a reason that we actually started out with a non-pi motor because when we come when we combine the non-pi short block with ported pi heads we actually get a gain of static compression as well. So we get even greater gains than we would if we just started out with a PI motor. Now the stock PI motor is going to end up starting out with more power, but you actually end up with a little bit less because you don't have the same compression when you're going to put ported heads on. So that's why we started out with this one. And I think we get the most bang for the buck. <clears throat> this was actually a junkyard motor. It was a 1998 non-PI version. And it came from a wrecking yard. And we started out basically with... We put long tube headers on it. We ran it with a fast XFI management system on it. We ran it with no accessories, just an electric water pump. We also ran it, <clears throat> excuse me, with an open throttle body and no air intake on it. Now we had also run this thing with uh, the stock exhaust manifolds and all that as well, but we ended up doing a whole series of builds using this particular motor as the starting point. It always worked out very well. It started out making 266 horsepower, 265.8 horsepower to be exact, and 342.7 foot-pounds of torque. And that's a pretty good example of a motor that was rated at 225 horsepower from the factory. And again, that rating would have been with a com stock exhaust manifolds, a complete exhaust, including the cats, all of the accessories in the front, the full air intake, and then run with the factory tune and run at a higher water temperature than we run. And that's why when we run this thing on the dyno, it makes more than the rated power output. But here's what happened on this combination. Now, if you want to do an upgrade on it, unfortunately, unlike the LS or some of the other combinations where you can just get by with doing a cam upgrade and see some fairly good power, on the 4.6 two-valve motor, you're going to have to upgrade essentially everything now we didn't touch the stock bottom end like we didn't put forge rods or forge pistons in it because really to get the power output that we needed it wasn't really necessary and if you're going for an na combination you're going for an all motor deal you would want to pick basically the three things that make the most amount of power and that's the heads cam and intake and that's exactly what we did on this one so what we did was i'll show you the power gains here on our modified version as you can see we picked up a lot of power we ended up making over 400 horsepower, 407 horsepower, 406.5 to be exact. And torque was way up there as well, 392.5. So we'll call that 393 foot-pounds. There was a little bit of a loss down below 3,600 RPM, but not dramatic. And, you know, the gains up top obviously were so great, uh, relatively speaking, compared to our original starting point. So we went from 266 to 406 so what's that 140 horsepower or so that's a quite a big quite a big gain naturally aspirated but here's what it took to get there so obviously we had to change these three things we on the stock non-pi motor we had the stock non-pi intake manifold the stock non-pi heads and then the stock non-pi camshafts which are obviously not great this particular combination we went with a pi stuff so we went with ported pi heads now the ported pi heads came from the guys at total engine airflow and they flowed very well they i think that they were flowing in the 240 range or so which was enough to easily support this power in fact support a great deal more power than this if we went wilder on the camshaft and later on, I, we would do a stroker version, which would obviously cost even more money. And then I put on my custom dual plenum intake manifold with adjustable runner length, and we could make quite a bit more power. In fact, we got closer to 500 horsepower with that combination. 
But on this 4.6, is which is what most people would do, we're obviously making less power, but we put the ported heads on. We put a set of comp cams in here. These were uh, Extreme Energy 274 cams, and they were the non-PI cams. We could get a little bit more if we went with the higher lift PI cams. And then we used a PI intake manifold and an AccuFab throttle body. And again, we employed the long tube headers on this thing. And we were able to pick up quite a bit of power, but unfortunately, you have to upgrade all of the things. A ported, ported heads are going to cost, obviously, a fair bit of money. The cams are going to cost you money, although there's, it's nice to know that there are two of them instead of having to buy four of them for the four-valve motor. The PI intake manifold will not cost you a great deal of money. You might want to upgrade that. And, you know, there are other options for this. You could go with the trick flow heads. You could go with the trick flow intake. There are also other intakes that will improve power beyond this PI combination, but usually there's a trade-off. Um, you can make more peak power and then you will lose low speed power. So again, there's always going to be a trade-off, but this gives you a pretty good idea of what kind of power you can make on the NA combination. So now let's take a look at what happens when we just take a motor and then add boost. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we just take a junkyard motor, put a turbo on it and an intercooler, a low buck deal from the eBay, from anywhere. This one that we ran came from the guys at CX Racing. It was one of their 76 millimeter turbos that we had used before on a lot of other things. And one of their, you know, single in, single out air water intercoolers. Again, a fairly inexpensive thing. And you could use the stock exhaust manifolds to feed the turbo. You can use readily available aluminum tubing to route the discharge from the turbo to the intercooler and then obviously to the intercooler to the stock in this case the stock pi intake manifold and stock throttle body this was again a junkyard 4.6 liter two valve this one was the later pi version so it started out closer to 300 horsepower i think it made about 295 and um, it actually made a little bit more torque than that, but I don't have the NA run, unfortunately, because this is right at the time when we switched over from <laughs> when the dyno switched over. So the two, when we ran the NA thing first and then ran the turbo thing after that. And unfortunately, I can't, I can't, we can't look at both of those. I can do those. I can run those individually, but not, I can't group them together. But we started out at about near 300 horsepower, actually slightly less. And what we did first off was run the, we ran the, we just basically mounted a turbo on it. Again, the 76 millimeter turbo from CX Racing. We had bigger injectors on it. We still had our fast XFI management system on it. Made no changes to the motor, no camshafts or springs or any. It was just basically all stock. We didn't put head studs in it. We didn't put ring gap in it. We didn't do any of that. All we did was take the motor, put it on the dyno, and then run it with the turbo. So here is what we started with. We basically ran the turbo non-intercooled. And we ran this at a very, very low boost, 6.3 pounds. And we also ran it with very low timing because it was non-intercooled. And I was kind of doing a comparison within a comparison here. So I was doing non-intercooled versus intercooled and try, trying to people show people what the difference is when you add an intercooler and then that you also get to add more um, timing on this thing. So we ran about 17 degrees of timing on this non-intercooled version. And we ran this one on pump gas. And then later on, when we went up in boost, we would actually be... Um, spiking the 91 with 100 octane but only on the final run where we went up to nine or ten pounds so this was with uh non-intercooled at 6.3 pounds it made 394 horsepower so essentially we had gained about 100 horsepower at this boost level and again a part of that reason is because the timing was so low 17 degrees is pretty low we would later jump up to 22 or 23 degrees with the intercooler and especially when we ran good gas torque was way up there at 425 foot pounds Here's what happened when we just turned the boost up, which is one of the good things about having a turbo combination, unlike the NA combination. When you put your heads and cam and intake together, you're going to get a given power output. But with the turbo stuff, as long as you have more turbo capability, more flow rate, you can obviously turn the boost up and get more power. And that's exactly what we did. So the first thing we did was add, we uh, added timing and we added an air to water intercooler. And we were running just ambient water through the air to water intercooler. We also added about five degrees of timing. And again, we're still running this on pump gas, but it was still only 6.1, 2, 3, you know, 
just over six pounds of boost basically but the power was up quite a bit in this case at that low boost level it made 431 horsepower and you can see torque was way up it liked the timing obviously everywhere 464 foot pounds of torque and at this point what we did was put some just mix a little bit of 100 octane and we ran these tests long ago and i had never even run e85 yet on anything but this would be a good opportunity to run e85 but we did not do that so here's what happened on our our final turbo deal. We turned the boost up to 9.7 pounds, still with 22 degrees of timing, and we had a mixture of 191 in this, where our combination made right at 500 horsepower, 499.9. So I don't know how you get any closer to an actual 500 horsepower motor, and torque was way up again. And as you'll notice, when we added the boost, the thing continued to make more torque than it did power, and this is exactly what it did when it was NA, and exactly what it did basically at every boost level, whether it had the intercooler or not, and whether it had the extra timing in it or not. The the boosted combination just mirrored what the um, NA combination was, and so this, this all continued to work out in the same fashion. But here's the thing, at less than 10 pounds, adding a simple eBay inexpensive turbo and an intercooler, and obviously you have to have big enough injectors, but the motor was otherwise stock. So you could get a motor from the wrecking yard and easily make 500 horsepower and, and 530 or so foot-pounds of torque. And this isn't the limit. At this point, I would start thinking about maybe running uh, some ring gap in the, in the turbo motor to make sure that you didn't hurt things. And if you're running E85, you could certainly get away with a lot more power. But this is one of the benefits of adding boost to it. And certainly the turbo and the intercooler and the associated things that you would need to make the turbo work would be less than the ported heads, the cams, the intake manifold, and all the things that you'd need to do the NA combination. And you'd be have and you'd be, you know, more than a hundred horsepower up, even at this relative, even at less than 10 pounds. So it shows the potential of what you can do with a turbo combination. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this comparison between our all-motor buildup on the 4.6 liter 2-valve and the turbo buildup? Well, we learned that obviously a turbo is definitely the way to go. You can definitely make a lot more power with the turbo by turning the boost up, even on a bone stock motor, than you can by building one up. And what about the cost? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and put a cost breakdown up here for the 4.6 2-valve all-motor build and then the 4.6 2-valve turbo build. And you can take a look. Now, these aren't all of the costs and I'm sure guys are going to list other things that go along with these but I put the major components in but as you can see you can really get all of the turbo stuff for really less than the cost of a set of ported heads now obviously if you're doing an NA combination you can go another route too you can not do the ported heads you can port them yourself you can get 462 valve heads from the junkyard you know there are a lot of ways to cut costs but this comparison shows you that a turbo really is the way to go and obviously the ideal combination would be to have the all of the NA power and then add boost and make sure that you have head studs and good head gas gets in ring gap and all that stuff and then you can turn it way up put a good size turbo on it and make a ton of power with these 462 valves or really any other motor but obviously that is going to be much more expensive armature holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff i'll keep testing